Hey, good morning, you guys. Welcome back to the channel. Michael Claire to Art, Drawing with Michael, Michael Claire to Illustration, whatever you want to call it. Drawing with Mike. Hey, I'm Mike. Um, this morning, um, day blah, blah, blah of the quarantine, and we are still plugging away at drawing something uh, small every day, something to warm up. I encourage you guys to get out there and, um, you know, even if it's in your front yard or wherever it is, backyard, and take your sketchbook along and draw something, um, draw, you know, draw something small. Uh, this morning, uh, as my warm up, I'll be wor uh, I'll be using the Kali Race uh, Blue Line pencil and maybe a myriad of other pencils as well. I'm just kind of feeling stuff out. I'm not really feeling like I want to draw today. Uh, <laughs> that kind of happens every once in a while. Yeah, the guy who you know tells you to draw every day doesn't want to draw today. Um. But that being said, this morning we're going to draw a pirate female and it's going to be stylized, a little bit stylized. I've got some reference um, that I'll show you guys as I go through the process and hopefully you'll get something out of this one. So enjoy. Okay, so I'm drawing on the, uh, is this Canson or Strathmore? Toned tan, Strathmore toned tan paper. You guys know that I like drawing on mid-tones. Give me a nice mid-tone ground. I've got a lot of illustrations and pictures that I've drawn on mid-tone paper. This is kind of where I started off in college. Actually, no, I didn't start off here in college. I started off using standard white paper and I moved into this. So I've been drawing on toned paper a long time. My reference is from, I think, the Pirates of the Caribbean Dose. I think that's what it is. And I've always liked this version of Elizabeth Swan. <coughs> I'm going to use her. I like the pose. I like the casual gesture. I like the three-quarter view. Um, you know, I like the design outfit. The quality of the image isn't that great, which actually kind of works to my benefit. It's kind of weird sometimes, even the worst images really work to my benefit because then I don't focus on the details. I just focus on the silhouette, the form, uh, and so on and so forth. So that being said, um, drawing human beings. So let's talk about that for a moment. Drawing human beings. Why don't I draw a lot of human beings? Um, first of all, I, I want to say that I'm not that good at it. Um, and that's, you know, that's probably 90% true. I like, I like doing creatures and it's just by force of habit that I do creatures and, you know, it's just one of those deals where a lot of times whenever I do pictures, actually it's not even turning out the way I want it right now, so I'm going to have to use the eraser. <laughs> Look at that, five seconds in and I'm already mucking things up. What the heck, G? It was too big on the page, so I was going to run out of room. Um, uh, you know, I don't do a lot of, actually, we're going to start out. See, this is what happens to me a lot of times. Um, I'll start doing a piece or a picture and it just doesn't feel right. And, and then I just start cramming it in there. So we're not doing that this morning. So then I'm going to start out with my red pencil because it's got a broader tip. It'll give me a broader stroke. Whenever I use something that's really sharp like this, for some reason, it just, it, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right for me. So now... As I go through and move through, what I'm doing. Okay, so what I do, you know, initially is I'll establish uh, a measurement. And you're like, wait a minute, bro, this isn't, you know, this isn't math class, this isn't science class, this isn't, you know, any of that. Well, it isn't, but, you know, whenever you draw stuff like this, if you're not going uber stylized, which I'm gonna kind of go kind of in the middle. Um, if I'm not going uber stylized, then there needs to be a semblance of accuracy. Um, you know, her head needs to be a certain size to be able to match to her body. Uh, it is going to be somewhat stylized. And right now I'm just going in and marking in and blocking in a lot of the forms and shapes that I see. Um, so now just really broad, I'm going in and I'm marking in just the broad, really broad strokes. And even this is too big. It's too big. Blasted. All right, so that's strike two, you lose. 
Okay, so we're gonna go a little bit different now. Now I'm, I've, I've weeded out some of the crap that's in my brain. I've gotten a little bit better of where I wanna be. See, a lot of times it's just not talking. So go here. Okay, that shoulder's back, so it's gonna be back. Okay. And she's got her hand coming around here. All right, that body is just a broad shape that comes down. Then we're gonna come here. I'm gonna come to the other. I got that jacket that comes right here. Okay, her head. Again, her head's a measurement. So if I get her head wrong, or not wrong, if I get it out of proportion, then it's literally gonna jump out to me every single time. Everything else will be out of proportion. Actually, if I do the head out of proportion and then I do the rest of the body according to the measurement of her head, then it should be fine. But since I'm, um, you know, I'm continually going back, her hand's gonna be way over here. So her hand's right here, so the other one's like right here. Actually, this shoulder's higher because this one, it's like that. So this one is further back because her shoulder goes behind her. And then the shoulder is up. It's kind of bunched. And the shoulder's down. Here's the line of action right here. Yep, because her face is facing that way. See, a lot of times people get so frustrated with their drawings like I have, and it's part of the process. I, I got to tell you, you know, I, I, I literally, I have, I told you I didn't want to draw this morning, but I'm, I'm actually in that point now where I'm kind of like, no, we're going to do this because I'm not going to allow something to steal my moment Okay, so let's go ahead and put on the hat. Hope everybody is faring okay in this quarantine moment. Hopefully there haven't been any major situations with any of my viewers. You know, I really appreciate everybody that watches my videos, gets something, uh, you know, in this particular point in time. This is a weird, my wife and I were talking about this last night. You know, we as human beings, especially ones that have grown up in the technology age, <laughs> And, you know, in, in the age of, uh, you know, antibiotics, um, being able to go down and just put a pill, you don't feel good, you get a pill, you know, your back hurts, you get a pill, um, you know, your tooth aches, you go to the dentist, you know, and antibiotics and all these things that help us as, you know, people. And it's great, the medical, you know, the medical field's great. The, the challenge is with doing what we've been doing you know, for the past hundred or so years, because the last big outbreak, I believe the pandemic was the Spanish flu in 1918 that swept through and killed a lot of, uh, a lot of people. <clears throat> and, you know, we just, we don't know how to react. We don't know how to react in staying inside. We don't know how to react whenever we don't have this massive amount of stimulus, um, stimulation. And it, it's, it's unnerving. Um, you know, I actually had a hard time yesterday and I, and I got I to thinking to myself, what the heck? Why am I having a hard time? I've got, you know, I got, every, it's like a perfect storm. I've got television. So that's entertainment. I've got the ability to go outside in my yard. I can go ride my bike in my yard. I can, I've got, you know, access to social media so I can see people. I've got zoom so I can actually converse with people. I've got FaceTime. And there, there is absolutely no reason why I should be complaining at all. You know, I'm not sick. Uh, and, you know, we don't have massive amounts of bad things happening uh, in our city, which is great. You know, I live in the mountains. And, you know, so I can't go and I can't go to the restaurant. Okay, big deal. So I order takeout. I can't, you know, do other things that maybe I'm so completely used to. And it's, it is really kind of a perfect storm if you think about it. <clears throat> um, 
Are we going to get past this? Heck yeah, we're going to get past this. We're, you know, we're humans. We, we're resilient. We've, we've got a lot going for us, you know, and it's just one of those deals where you look at it and you go, this is just a temporary thing and everything will work out. And plus, one of the things that they say, especially during times of extreme, um, you know, things happening to you, it's always good to have a positive outlook. So don't feed on a bunch of garbage that, you know, in the media that tells you that, you know, everybody's going to die and that it's going to be a year, it's going to be five years. No, you speak the things that you want <clears throat> and, you know, you'll, you'll come out on the other side. So that's, that's my positive, uh, vibration to you, me and my friends, uh, as we traverse this coronavirus uh, quarantine. Okay, so what I'm doing now, especially, I'm, I'm, I should be actually switching over to a, a finer tip, but I wanna go ahead and block in some more of these shapes and I'm going back and I'm correcting. I'm correcting some of the areas that I need to correct. And what I'm constantly doing, and I'll show you what I'm doing here. So here's my reference. I'm going back, so I'm going, whenever I draw her head, like if I have this area right here, okay, maybe I'll stop and I'll look at the reference and then I'll completely go to the opposite side and I'll check to where stuff is. I'm constantly checking, like this shoulder right here, actually this shoulder goes, she goes like this. So it goes like that and then this one. Sometimes it, ha it helps, see it helps to look at the reference. There we go. Because again, right, got that, that line of action right there. So I'm coming back, got that right there. This comes down and she's got her. See again, you come here and it's one line here <clears throat> and it's one line and it comes like that, okay? And this goes up and out. Here, here, you have that fold right there as I mark on my iPad. It's fine, it's fine, it's just pencil. Calm the heck down. Okay. Okay, and then I come back. And literally, I'll, I'll finish, not finish, but I'll, I'll modify this area and then I'll snap back over here. It's like... In my brain, I want to get over here and balance things, okay? And then I'll snap back over here, right? And here's that buckle, the buckle right here. The top of the buckle is literally right in the center of this little area right here, okay? And her hand kind of comes out. And don't think of all the bones in her hand. Think of it as a shape, right? The shape of the hand right here comes out and it's literally, it comes here and then it comes around and then it comes in. That's it. That, I don't want you to draw anything else. And then you come back and you got this space in between, which I don't have. So I need to go ahead and make provisions for that. Cause this little, this little curve right here will accentuate her whole leaning aspect. So if you look at it, she's not leaning much, but I want to push the pose a little bit. So I'm going to have it come out like this and around. And now I'll draw little lattice lines to help me understand form and think of how it's going to be shaped. All right. So now I got this pencil. I found this pencil. Let me see what it looks like. It's pink. We're not using that. <laughs> it's pink and I don't want to draw with pink. I certainly don't want to draw with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sharpen that one just slightly. I don't want to go too far. Actually, I did go too far. <clears throat> These are really great little devices. They're little pencil extenders. You notice I, I really haven't used my eraser a lot. Pretty much all my pencils still have their erasers intact just because I don't, I don't do a lot of erasing. It's just, you know, I never really did um, overall. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go in and I'm going to just start simplifying and drawing
I always thought the character of Elizabeth Swan was awesome, especially this particular iteration. My wife and I have a daughter. And at that time, whenever this movie came out, I think she was like four or five. And back then, the Disney store did a clearance on some other Halloween products. And they, um, they had the Elizabeth Swan Pirates of the Caribbean costume. And she, uh, my daughter wore it for like a Halloween festival. Oh, that needs to be, I need to erase. <laughs> I was bragging it only erase. Yeah, that doesn't happen all the time. I typically use a gum eraser and you see I do have, I have some mileage on this. This is probably like six years old, seven years old. <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to get a little pooch right there. Okay. All right. Okay. Anyway, so what I did was, as her daddy, I took an iPod back in the days when iPods exist, and I went ahead and I did the Pirates of the Caribbean music, and the jacket had a pocket in there right in the side, and she had a little speaker that went around, a cord that went around her back, and she had a speaker on the other side, and she walked around uh, the fall, the festival, and... She had pirate music playing the whole time. And let me tell you, she was awesome. She did win. So let's do this. All right, go back. All right, so now that I've got the head mapped in, what I'll do now is I'll just start correcting things. As I go through, the thing is with, with females and those of you guys and gals who draw females will, will agree you can't put a ton of lines in there because what it'll do, it will age your heroine or however, you know, if you want it to be, want her to be older, you obviously, you put a bunch of lines in there. But if you want her to be young, you don't want to do that. Okay. All right. So now we'll just start having some fun. Okay. I've got this jacket that comes up, comes around, part of her neck. This is dark. Okay, got this. Comes out, down. So I've had interesting developments in my career as of late. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I told you guys, but one of my uh, clients that I've had for a long time, I mean, going on five years, you know, they've basically shut their doors temporarily while they get their finances in order. So half my income went away. 
And that really sucked. Um, you know, one of my other clients that I've been, you know, going with for going on five years hasn't uh, contacted me because they are, again, trying to get stuff situated with regards to their finances. You know, I, I get that. I understand that. And that's one of the really, the big pitfalls that you have to prepare for um, in the freelance world. You know, but I look at it and I think, you know, I, I prepared for it because we have savings and we have, you know, things that we have done to really help us um, in these particular times. But, you know, we never leveraged ourselves to the point where we couldn't walk away from something. You know, if a client ever screwed us, we weren't particularly relying upon a particular check. But, you know, this particular client that I have, that I've been with for a while, you know, they require a lot. And that's one of the things that, you know, you really have to balance. And, and this is, it's not a warning. It is a maturity thing. As an artist, one of the things that, you know, I always told my students was the fact that, you know, as an artist, you're always going to have work. You're always going to, you're always going to, you know, if you're good, then you'll always have work and, and you really don't have to worry about that. You just have to plan for the unexpected. What is the unexpected? You know, maybe your house gets hit by a tornado and then you need to be able to have backup computers. You need to have all your data, you know, to, you know, make sure that your family is safe. Pandemic. <laughs> when everything gets shut down and suddenly you don't have, um, you know, you don't have your client base that you can rely upon for a weekly paycheck. So you need to make sure and do these things that allow you to, stay in business and stay reliable. This eye is jacked. This eye is completely jacked. I completely jacked that eye up. <clears throat> this eye is fine. This eye is jacked. Okay, so we're going to go back. Okay, so we're going to come here. We're going to come here. There. Yeah, with the fact that I've already, and this is one of the things you have to watch out for whenever you do work in this particular paper, it fills up because these pencils are made of wax. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squint my eyes and I'm gonna bring out these shadows because I wanna cover up this eye, this eye is jacked. I have completely jacked that eye up. See, in a digital environment, what would I do? I would erase this entire area. I would maybe select this area. I would I would bring this down. But now that I'm looking at it, it's just, it's not good. So you guys get to see me struggle. Get to see me struggle with this jacked up eye. I could cheat a little. Here we go, we'll do this. completely freaking jacked up oh my gosh uh, there we go anyway so you want to be prepared his nose is jacked up too <laughs> see what happens is as i go through and i start working in this particular piece i start defining the areas that i really want to bring out and make important and what happens is areas like that jump out to me. And even the mouth, the mouth I think is too big because if you look, typically you want the corners of the nose to match up with the inner part of the eye. And then you have the corners of the mouth that match up with the iris in the center of your eye, which kind of gives you a balance. And I'm looking, there we go. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. <clears throat> So being prepared, you know, having savings, having the things, you know, not being over leveraged. Don't go buy a $250,000 house if you can't afford it, uh, you know, $300,000 house now. And, you know, make sure that you have enough money on hand, at least maybe a two month, three month reserve, you know. And I know that's hard because a lot of people do live paycheck to paycheck. And as a freelancer, 
you have to literally be prepared for the unexpected. So now I'm gonna go to the, the fabric folds. And what's really nice is I've drawn a lot of fabric in my life. So I have an understanding of how things fold and how things bulge. Eh, I said bulge. And even though I do sometimes, you know, I can't rely upon that as, as gospel. You know, I don't want to sit there and say that I know how to draw every single fabric fold on the planet. My name is Captain Fabric Fold. Nice to meet you. No. Um, no, absolutely not. Here. My finger goes right there. Okay. Get that back there. The other one right there. And the other ones are tucked under. So that's my little advice to you guys is to make sure that you plan for the unexpected because it will come at you. It will come at you hard. And then, you know, you don't want to be caught in a situation where suddenly you have to choose between electricity and food. And the thing is, is, you know, I hear a lot of people talk about the government, the government, the government, the government. I, I'm not. I'm not pro-government at all. I never have been because history has shown that, and you can look back, you know, through history, plain as day, you know, you don't have a government that's like, oh, we decided to take all of our, you know, all the citizens' um, rights away and then suddenly everybody's happy. No, the problem is it's not so much the, the theology behind what they want to do. Uh, it's, it's the re it's the realization that whenever you involve man and people and people's ideals and, and the way, you know, man wants to govern, um, and you know, individuals and singular people, suddenly you realize after, you know, you, you've given up your rights and then that person's like, Oh, by the way, I'm going to institute martial law, by the way, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And then you start thinking, wait a minute. I gave up all of my rights. I thought you were going to take care of me. And he's like, yeah, but I need a super gigantic palace. And I need this and I need that. And I need all these things. And, and then suddenly, you know, oh, I'm in control of the military. And then it gets kind of scary. You know, I, I saw yesterday that some sunbathers were out sunbathing and police came. And since they didn't have masks on, they were, you know, they, they ended up, I don't think they got arrested, but that's the start, man. It starts out small, you know, and, and I think the tagline was, you know, these people didn't have their masks on. So, and I, th and I think another person got pulled over and ticketed because they were riding in their car. See, that's the start of it, guys. That's the start of, you know, you realize, oh, they're just trying to, you know, take care of us because of this. Yeah, I understand that. And that's a good thing per se, but the wrong thing is, is allowing, you know, the government to take over and take your rights. You know, I would never want the government to take my rights, um, for, for, you know, a paycheck. Uh, you know, I think in Spain, they instituted recently, I'm going to do this, go around. They instituted, you know, paying people, I, I, I don't know all the details and, maybe it had to do with retirement people or a pension. And I think that's a little bit different um, than, you know, just giving money free willy nilly. And the whole thing with the stimulus coming, I understand why they did that, but it's, it's not a catch all. You know, there's a lot of families out there that definitely need a little bit more. So anyway, enough of the politics and enough of that crap. So right now, what I'm doing is I'm going back and I'm just correcting some of the areas that I think need a little bit of attention. I, I'm Again, this is just a stylized um, drawing. And, you know, there are parts of it that I'm really unhappy with, but then there are parts that I really like. So, I think... I'll do so now this hand right here see this hands huge she's got like a claw so I need to go ahead and balance this hand 
because I think this hand possibly may be a little bit too big. And in a digital environment, I would go back and I would go back and just mess around with stuff. See, she's got a vest on. See, this would be my initial first pass drawing. This is called a first pass drawing. And oh, I don't know why, because she's got her jacket is behind her. Okay, her jacket is behind her. And she's got this right here. This first pass drawing would go to um, my digital environment. And then I would come back and I would basically, you know, and even in this situation, I, you know, going back and erasing the whole thing, getting rid of the really definitive hard lines that I've put in here, even though I like my hard lines. You know, go ahead and draw this in. Shadow. Squint your eyes. If you guys want to show, get the shapes of the shadows really quick, squint your eyes. It'll, it'll literally every shadow pops out. And two, you ever seen uh, artists that close one eye and you're like, why are you gonna close one eye, man? You're, you're losing half your, your ability to see whenever you do that. The reason they do that is because instead of having perspective and distance, it flattens everything. See, you're drawing on a flat surface, but you're looking in three dimensions. So if you look in three dimensions, it plays with your brain whenever you're trying to transfer it to a 2D surface. So if you get lost, if you're like, oh, I'm so frustrated. I just can't get that the right perspective. Close one eye. Close one eye. And that will flatten your drawing out. I'm well, not drawing. It'll flatten your viewpoint out. And it will help you. The same thing happens whenever you're drawing hands. I hate drawing hands. I actually purchased a course on drawing hands recently. You're like, what? You draw hands all the time. I'm like, yeah, but, you know, everything helps, right? I want to be able to keep going in, this, in my field and improve and do things that, you know, make me better. And that, my friends, is part of the equation. Okay, so that's pretty much all I wanted to show you guys today. Hopefully you got something from my drawing. Hopefully it's not too long and boring. Um, I'm drawing as fast as I can for you guys. I don't even know what time it is. What time is it? 10.23. Hopefully everybody will be safe in quarantine. Go out and draw something today. Go out and do something fun. Have some fun, you know, as best you can, right? And remember, art is subjective. That means that not everybody's going to like what you do. It doesn't mean that what you do is bad or wrong. It just means that that particular person or people in that particular area maybe not like what you do. Then again, they might like everything you do. Just remember, art is a subjective medium and a job. And always remember that the best thing you can do is continue forward. You know, this drawing is done. I will move on to the next one. So thank you guys for visiting my channel. Like and subscribe if you like what you see. And as always, uh, have a great day. Bow, 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 wow, wow, bow, bow. Bow, 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 bow,